Churchill Shadow, chapter 13. Stella, youthful courage. 1st of October, Fresnes Prison, Centre Penitentiaire de Fresnes, Val de Marne, south of Paris. The grey stone prison loomed over the valley. The high damp perimeter walls were covered in dark green slime. It looked forbidding in the cold October half light. Luke's cousin, the prison officer, Philippe Moreau, paced up and down the courtyard. He jingled his heavy keys and thought about Stella's illegal visit at midday. Should I tell horrible Henry the forger he has a visitor? The old man was grumpy when he'd spoken to him earlier, so Philip said nothing. It was 11.30 a.m. and Philippe was sweating. Sergeant Moreau, a senior officer, walked towards him. Shit, mumbled Philip. Philippe, now what? The prisoners in the hall are making a lot of noise. Please take a few of your men and quieten them. I'll take over your duty at the gate for now. Yes, sir. Philippe was supposed to be at the gate checking all the passes to allow Stella through without question. He could not leave the senior officer in charge. He ran over to where a few prison guards were drinking coffee. You, 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 come with me now. Leave the damn drinks. His subordinates looked at each other, picked up their rifles and meandered down the steps towards the area known as the hole. This was where the most dangerous and difficult prisoners were held. The bored inmates were shouting and banging on the doors of their cells. The guards aimed their rifle butts through the bars at any prisoner foolish enough to stand within range. After 15 minutes, the prisoners were enjoying the fun and making even more noise. Philippe did not want to remove any of them for punishment because it would have entailed spending half an hour with or more with a senior officer and he would miss Stella. Stella was early. She allowed a number of women in the queue to go ahead of her so she would arrive at the gate at noon. She could see a ginger-haired officer at the head. When it was her turn to show her identity papers, she looked the guard in the eye and raised an eyebrow in recognition. The officer's eyes widened. Her sparkle was a marked contrast to the miserable people filing into the dismal building. He just glanced at her papers. Stella entered the courtyard to see a red-haired guard running up the stairs from the hole. He stopped and they stared at each other. Stella's eyes focused on the birthmark on Philippe's chin. Stella felt a sharp pain in her chest. Philippe took her aside. I'm so sorry. I had some trouble to sort out. Let me show you where to go. Henri Leclerc was painting in his cell. He was a short, middle-aged man with thinning grey hair and a scraggy beard. Each week he exchanged some of his rations for paint and paper. And when he ran out of paper, he painted the walls. He is an extraordinary artist, remarked Philippe, but he's an aggressive little man. He didn't get caught by the police, you know. He's far too good for that. No, no, no. He fell out with his underworld boss and one of his associates gave him up. Probably because he'd gone too far and they couldn't stand him any longer. Wait here, I'll fetch him. Philippe ushered Stella into a windowless room which contained a metal table and two chairs. Henri did not like to be interrupted when he was painting, so Philippe gave the lightest taps on his cell door. Henri, good news, you have a visitor. Not me. Three years in here and I've never had a visitor. Go away, try someone else, con. But you do have a visitor. Tell them to fuck off, con. Henri continued painting. You will see the visitor or I will confiscate those brushes. Henri growled, what bastard comes to see me now? Stella held her trembling hands together as she sat in the visitor's room. Philippe led Henri to her table and withdrew to the corner. Who the hell are you, Con? Henri slumped onto a metal chair. My name is Stella and I work with some people who need your skills. I want to try and help you escape. With remission, I've only 18 months to serve. Why the hell would I want to escape now? 
We desperately need your help to forge papers for us. Our people risk being arrested because we can't get their papers 100% correct. I don't give a shit about your people. If I escape and they catch me, they will put me away for another 10 years. Goodbye. Please, Henri, sit down. Henri hesitated. Please, Stella indicated to the other chair and he sat down again. Look, Henri, you may not care about us, but it is our people and others like them who are fighting the Germans on French soil. It's not my war. I was in here before it started and I'll be, it'll be finished when I come out. Henri stood up again. Philippe moved forward. Well, mademoiselle, no point in you bothering to visit us again. I might be out of a job soon. Out of a job? Stella began to put her coat on. The German military are taking over the prison. That's all I need. Put that Germans guarding me, growled Henry. Oh no, they won't be guarding you. It's rumoured the place would just be for political prisoners. Philippe began to usher Stella towards the door. So I'll be going home then. I'll be going home then. Goodbye, lady. Philip winked at Stella. I shouldn't think so. I'm pretty sure I heard one of the senior officers talking with the German lieutenant about transporting prisoners from here to German labour camps. Anyhow, I'm sure you'll be fine. You've 18 months left to serve. It's the poor beg buggers in the hole I feel sorry for. The Germans have decided to execute them all. Stella used this as a cue. What would it take? To get you to help us, name it. Henri's eyes flickered. What? Anything? We'll give you what you want if you work for us until the Germans are being driven out of France. Mm. Henry looked at the ceiling. I want a full pardon and 20,000 francs. Well, began Stella. Henri interrupted. A house with a studio to work in, in her, someone to cook and clean and a pretty girl just like you to attend to my other needs. We have a mill house where you can live and we can arrange some domestic help for you, said Stella. Henri leered at her, revealing brown tobacco stained teeth. So how do you get me released? You blow up the guard house. Stella smiled, she had him. If we get the information, can you forge your own release papers? Get me a copy of Patern's signature and one of the stamps from his personal seal. Give me a paper and a pen. I'll make you a list. But why Marshal Patern we're, when we're in the occupied zone? Several prisoners have been released to Vichy on Patern's request. It seems they have rich French relatives with influence. The prison governor and the guards here have been asked to cooperate, probably to keep the peace. But how can we get hold of one of Marshal Patern's stamps for you? I think that's your problem. Stella fished in her pockets and produced a small notebook and pencil. Henri began to write a list. She approached Philippe and whispered, Will you bring him what he needs? I know it's a huge risk for you. Surely Luke told you I'm with the resistance, with the confrere Notre Dame. No, we never discuss individuals for security reasons. Each of us is told only what we need to know in case anyone gets captured and interrogated. Stella smiled at Philippe. Anyway, thank goodness you can help. We'll be very grateful. Henri finished his list and handed it to Stella. Now get lost. I was in the middle of putting the finishing touches to my lady's work. He got up and walked to the door. He turned and gave Stella a sardonic smile before heading back to his cell. Stella plunged her hands in her pockets as she walked out of the prison. How are we going to get a stamp used by Marshal Patern? Philippe escorted her as far as the bridge by the gate. I think you'll have to consult your group. It's not going to be easy. Is the Prime Minister of Vichy France in a free zone?